Okay, this one's going to be a little bit different from what we've done in the past. This is a 2002 Chrysler 300. And the situation with this, which I've been aware of for some time, is oxygen sensor trouble codes. When you come to these newer Chrysler systems, and I always thought it was 2004 and newer, but apparently 2002 model year, we have the same condition. But we have an O2 sensor trouble code, and I'll get you a shot of the of the scanner and the scope readings and everything in a minute, but I want you to tell you guys what's wrong with this car first. It has the wrong oxygen sensor in it. Somebody replaced the sensor with a, with a Bosch aftermarket replacement and they cannot be used on this design. So the primary focus of this video is to show you guys that these aftermarket replacement O2s cannot be used on these Chrysler systems that run two and a half volt bias on the ground of the O2. And, and really that's the telltale piece that says, hey, you better be running an OEM only O2 sensor when you see two and a half volts on the sensor ground. So I'm going to show you that here in a minute, our voltage readings, our scan data. So going into this now, we know the problem. I'm going to do the best I can in showing you the symptoms that you will have when you have the wrong sensor in this car. Now the little bit of history on this, this thing was in an accident. And from what we heard, this problem occurred after the accident. I'm not going to name names or where this car went for repair, but I will tell you that the first suggestion with the O2 code after the accident was an engine harness problem. They wanted to inspect the harness and, po and possibly replace the harness. They went ahead and changed the oxygen sensor. This was done at a Chrysler dealership and after they changed the oxygen sensor, the problem was not fixed, and so they replaced the engine computer. I am looking at a bill in my hand right now for $1,079. And I'm not going to name names again. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. They replaced the powertrain control module. They replaced what they called a shorted O2 on the bank two sensor one, which would be this side over here, driver's side and then they replaced the spark plugs because they were fouled and it had misfire trouble code. So codes in memory, misfire, O2 related codes. And now since that has been done, they now have definitely suggested replacing the wiring harness. They brought it to us. The owner brought it to, to us instead of proceeding further. Now I believe the insurance company is the one that footed the bill for this so far because they're relating it to the accident. I don't know, again, I don't want to get involved in that. Guys, I want to show you this is the wrong sensor. I have a part number on this list. and It says that the sensor was replaced. It is a 15705 is the part number listed on this. The other thing that I don't like, if this is a Chrysler dealer, is they put NGK plugs in a Chrysler. They don't put NGK plugs in a Chrysler if you're a Chrysler dealer. Um, but I looked up this part number on Google and what I found is this is in fact a Bosch part number. So I'll show you that on the screen here next and then we'll come back to the car and I'll show you all of our, our tests on the scan tool and then our tests on the sensors. So check it out. I did a Google search, O2 sensor, 15705 and look what we come up with. This is a Bosch O2 sensor. This 15705 is apparently confirmed to be a Bosch O2 sensor. Something else before I get to the scan tool, show you the code, show you the short-term, long-term fuel trim and the O2s. Guys, we already replaced the two upstream O2s, not replaced, sorry, we swapped them and our problem moved from the bank two to the bank one. And I'm going to show you that uh, those data parameters, but our codes and our information in the scan tool would be before we swap them. So I'm doing everything on this one in hindsight after. And uh, so I wanted you to be aware of that, that our Bosch replacement now is over here on this side and our, our OEM O2 is now on bank two, which was over here and the Bosch replacement was over there. So I'll show you the scans out of now. Okay, here's our code list and again, we swapped these sensors already, so we set this code, this bank one sensor, one O2 sensor voltage high code that was not there previous. So the only codes that were in memory was the bank two sensor one and the multiple cylinder misfire codes. 
So we go to the scan data now and I'll show you, again, we moved this sensor over to here and what we're going to do is show you the graft data now. This is after switching the two upstream O2 sensors. See from initial startup at a ne negative 19% on the fuel trim. First time we did it, we got it to 30%. And it's almost like the computer, once it flags the trouble code, ignores the bank one sensor, starts to use the bank two for the fuel trim. That's what I'm pretty sure is happening. Let's see if we can catch that negative 30% again. I'll try it one more time. Okay, so I cleared the codes. I'm gonna go memory reset, and I'm going to reset my adaptive fuel. Nice little feature of Chrysler's to allow me to do that. And before we start the car, let's get back to our data. All right, so short term up top, O2's down below. Go ahead and start that back up for me. Let's see how it reacts this time with the memory wiped out. We know this sensor is not doing what it should be. This is our boss replacement. See how fast this Chrysler O2 came back to life? It's still showing the same fuel trim for both banks. I really want to try to get this thing to to believe this sensor. And when it does, what, you, what we'll see is the computer takes all the fuel away on the one bank and that's really what set the misfire code. So the foul plugs, the misfire code, the roughness, all due to the wrong O2 and I'm trying to catch it here, having a little bit of a difficult time. I'm gonna try to warm this up a little, maybe try to get this voltage lower. Maybe the computer will start to use it. What we're looking for is a very, very negative fuel trim number here on this on this bank one. And I don't know why we're still using this other side. This is a pretty standard procedure now on today's cars. When you have a fold on one side, you use the other side for your trim control. Um, you can see that clearly. Identical fuel trims. The car's running perfect right now with a dead O2. I just need the computer to start using this again. Show you what it does when, when it uses it. if it brought this code back. It did, that code's there, so there, it's using the other side. Maybe, I, I don't know if it'll let me clear it with it running, it probably won't. Try it anyway. It's not going to let me. I really wanna show you guys this negative percentage that we saw. Well, I'll tell you what we can do. And this will be a little bit work, more work on our end, but we can swap these O2s back. Let me show you. Let me show you this one a little bit more, and then we'll then we'll do that. I'll move the O2s so you guys. This won't be a word of mouth. You will know that it is definitely an O2 issue. So I just went back into here. Ignore the self-updating min-max scales. Right now, it looks like that one's working. Right? It's not. Look at the minimum: 3.4, maximum 3.6. 3.3 and 2.5. So 
on this design sensor, again, two and a half to three and a half volts would be zero to one. They're using a ground bias. I have this information, section five. We talked about it. That is not a good looking O2. This is a crappy signal. That's a crappy cutoff tool. <laughs> what the heck? As soon as I start talking, he's gonna, gonna do it again. <laughs> All right, listen, here's what I'm going, you guys are gonna have to deal with it. It is what it is. What I'm going to do before we swap these O2s back, I'm gonna get you some voltage readings on the signal and on the ground wire of this sensor and on this sensor next. And then we will show the heater circuits and then we'll switch them back and I'll let you guys see the reaction of it. You cannot run a aftermarket O2 on this design. I've been seeing it for years. This is the first one I've actually been able to show. So hang with me here. Just a quick shot of our connections here. We're back probing the sensor on the black and gray wire, which is the signal and the signal ground. The yellow is going to be my O2 signal wire, and the green is going to be my O2 signal ground. Now, not the same dangers with these two T-pins touching each other. Of course, we don't want them to touch each other, but on inputs, you have a lot more of a safety net than you do on an output. Still, we don't really necessarily want to double T-pin components. I'm showing this for easy viewing on a video. I would probably do these individually if I was in the field, but just be careful what you're doing with T-pins. All right, here's our voltage levels. Before we start the car, we have 4.16 volts on the yellow wire, which is the signal, and we have 2.48, which is my sensor ground, showing you this does use a ground bias. And they're also using a signal bias on this still, as they did with the other Chrysler O2s forever. I have some other videos on O2 bias voltage on a Chrysler. I'll throw some hyperlinks in here for that. Go ahead and start that. Let's take a look at what this looks like. We're on a one second time base. I'm gonna change this to a five second. So five second time base. Notice the ground is staying steady. Two and a half volts on that ground. And this is very quickly operating. In other words, it came to life very quickly. We had this car sitting still for at least 10 minutes before we started it. And that is a good working O2 sensor circuit. Now, I'm not going to go into frequency and amplitude and all that. I'm saying good working compared to the other side that I'm going to show you here in a minute. Notice the steady voltage on the ground. We have a min max here, two and a half, roughly going two and a half to three and a half. If we were to take our, our scope ground and connect to sensor ground, what we would see is a normal looking O2 signal. In fact, I'll show you that. I have this same capture in my book, section five. I'm, gonna, I'm going to show it to you live. This is with the scope connected to the sensor ground instead of battery ground. Notice the range of the sensor, normal range. We're going from around 50 millivolts to over 800 millivolts on the O2. Completely normal looking O2. But the difference is I'm now connected to the sensor ground instead of battery ground. Watch what happens when I move the scope lead to battery ground. Notice my voltage went off the scale. Ignore the green trace. We're not looking at that one right now. I'm not connected. This is connected to battery ground. So on this kind of sensor, with this two and a half volt bias on the ground, depending on how you connect to it, you will alter your voltage levels. Again, section five, I have this info in my book. Be careful with these. Go back to my sensor ground wire so I can show you that two and a half volts, and there it is. So what happens if you take a meter and you compare two and a half volts to a wire, steady two and a half, to a wire that's changing from two and a half to three and a half, is you cancel out the two and a half volts and you only show the zero to one volt, basically O2 signal, which is a normal O2. For some reason, guys, these replacement aftermarket sensors do not operate off of 
this two and a half volt bias on the ground. Something internal to the sensors, they don't work right. So let me show you the Bosch side now. On the passenger side now where we move this Bosch replacement O2, so I'm connected to the signal and the ground of the O2. Not the heater circuit, signal circuit. Okay, this is the signal and the signal ground on the Bosch replacement O2. You see the two and a half volt bias still on the ground wire and our signal is pretty flat line. We're going from three and a half volts to 3.7, really not much change there at all. If I do some snap throttle tests, get some reaction and some changes in that but very poor voltage measurements on the heater circuit we have two T pins on this and I want to warn you guys this is a power side switch heater circuit if these two T pins touch each other we can damage the engine computer so i want to be very very clear that this is not exactly the best practice i'm showing this to speed this video process up i want to show you both powers and grounds on the heater circuit at the same time i would recommend if you're doing this to do them individually so this is of our boss o2 that does not belong in this vehicle and you see that we're switching the power side. We're going from zero to near battery voltage of 14 volts. And then our, our ground is a flat line zero. So this is definitely a power side switch. Pulse width modulated heater circuit. We see some gaps in here. Let's look at the Chrysler side in comparison. This is the Bosch side we're looking at right now. This is the Chrysler O2. Again, monitoring the heater circuit. You see it's pulse width modulated on the power side. And I don't see those same kind of gaps in there. We'll show you the same thing with current. I don't know, again, if this tells us whether or not there's an issue here. Just making these observations. This is our Chrysler O2 heater circuit. Looking at a min-max of zero and about 1.9. So just under two amps of current. There's some spikes in there, not a big deal. Let's change our time base here, get you a little bit more detail. This is a pulse width modulated heater circuit. Show you what the other side looks like in comparison. This is the Bosch replacement O2. This is the heater circuit current. You see we have gaps in here. Not that this really would help you identify that this is the wrong sensor for the car, but we can see differences in the heater circuit. And our amperage level is a little bit lower. We're at 1.86 instead of 1.9. But there's gaps in the controls. Not sure, again, if that helps, but just wanted you to see it. Get a zoomed in view now. You see those same gaps. Again, power side switch circuit. Next thing I'm going to show you guys we're going to swap the O2s, go back to the scan tool, and I'll show you that it's definitely the O2. Wiring tests all checked good. Other than the heater looking a little bit different, we see nothing else with this. It's definitely not a wiring harness problem. It's definitely not a mixture problem. There's an O2 issue here. Swapping the O2s, I'll get you back on the scan data. Well, before I do that, let me show you one more time what our scan data looks like. I'm gonna pull up the long term this time. I guess we could do that, but it's really not going to matter because I moved them. So long term looks pretty steady at seven on both banks. 7.8 O2s, oh, bank one sensor one, bank two sensor one, min max three three two five three six 
3.6, so this one's not really changing, even though it looks like on the scan tool that, that it really is a lot of changes. Fuel trims look pretty stable because this computer's pretty smart and it's not using that sensor. So what I'm going to show you when I move this one back over here, it's going to follow it coming up next. Okay, I swapped the two front O2s again, hoping to show you guys the very negative fuel trim number. And more importantly though, even if I can't, what I want to show you is that our problem sensor moves to the other bank. So we will now see this problem on bank two. Okay, go ahead and start it. See how fast the bank one warms up. You see that bias voltage drop. This heater circuit is functional. We did show that. Amperage is pretty close to being the same on both banks. There's just something internal that's different. The sensor cannot be used in this car. I wish I, I could give you the exact cause or the exact reason. Apparently, Bosch doesn't know about it either. I've been dealing with this problem for at least at least seven or eight years that I've identified this problem on Chrysler's and I just want you guys to warn I just want you guys to know about it because look what was done with this car engine computer was replaced O2 was replaced the, the next thing they wanted to do was a wiring harness now here's the thing we can't totally blame the dealer because there's an insurance company involved because this was an accident vehicle and we all know the insurance companies want us to use cheaper parts sometimes so is it possible that the aftermarket or the insurance company came in? Check out that fuel trim, negative 20, negative 24. Car's starting to get real rough. Watch it. It's going through a cycle trying to make this sensor work, taking all the fuel away. Why is it taking all the fuel away? Because 3.5 volts is rich. Basically every number above what is it two and a half to three and a half? So really every number above three is rich, numbers below three is lean. I know there's a lot of shop noise here, and you guys aren't going to be able to hear this engine surging when we get down to our negative number. My guys wanted that screenshot, no problem there. This is actually a good screenshot. Well, I'll let you guys watch this while I'm talking. Listen. Is it possible that the insurance company said to the dealer, you're, you're going to use an aftermarket part here because it's cheaper? I know the factory O2, we priced it, is around $112. And I'm sure that this boss replacement that was used is probably half that cost. The problem is, on these Chryslers, with this 2.5 volt bias on the sensor ground, you cannot use an aftermarket sensor. It must be a Chrysler O2. Now you guys can debate me on this and you can take issue with this and even if it's boss who wants to, to, to make us think about it, hey listen, this is the kind of crap that we got to deal with in, in the aftermarket. And not all cars are like this. Boss makes a good O2 sensor. I've used Bosch O2 sensors in hundreds of cars. So I'm not knocking them here. But it doesn't work in this Chrysler and I've seen this time and time again. This car is not an anomaly. This isn't a one-time deal. I've been seeing this problem, like I said, seven or eight years at least. You cannot run in these Chryslers with a two and a half volt bias. You cannot run anything but a factory O2. That's pretty cool. We still see this O2 staying above three and a half volts. Even though the computer's taking fuel away, that thing does not draw, that sensor does not react properly. It's kind of neat how we're seeing this this side go positive here too during during this event but this isn't our main area of focus our main area is this bank too you see our problem moved over we'll let this run for a little bit until the computer decides to stop doing this and i'll get you a shot of the short-term trim correcting on both banks together based off of this bank one sensor again remember this scale here 
The reason it looks so small is we started off at five volts and, and then came down. What I could do is, is let's get out of there. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I might lose my window of, of measuring that. I wanted to reset those min-max scales. Should have been using the other update. Now I won't have to keep doing this. What you're going to see now is these graphs are going to be updated. And so we'll see a nice clean looking O2 signal, roughly two and a half to three and a half volts on the working sensor. And then you see our, our uh, aftermarket replacement O2, three and a half to uh, 3.5 to 3.7 and not real good reaction. I mean, it does have some when the computer's taking fuel away uh, with the fuel trim, we are getting some reaction to that but it's not reacting like it should be. It's not dropping lean. It, it won't go under 3.5 volts. And again, roughly two and a half to three and a half volts is your range on this. When you're comparing to, to battery ground and not sensor ground, it's zero to one when you're comparing to sensor ground. If I go global OBD, you would see the regular scales, but this being the OEM format, this is the way they're giving it to you. So two and a half to three and a half volts, really three and a half is the, is the peak that you would normally see. Look, this one's not even going that high on the rich side. So even when it's coming low, it's still rich. So what's the computer doing? It's taking fuel away, taking fuel away. When is it doing that? Well, this signal's coming high, we're taking fuel away, it's going to be delayed. So we can see those reactions of, of the computer taking fuel away, but it's not reacting like it should be. It's kind of interesting that this bank one is reacting this way. I'm not sure I have a description for you on that. That's not our main issue here. Again, the main purpose with this video is don't use the wrong O2 in these crises. This is what it looks like. It looks like that's the opposite of the other one. It looks like they're like Wait, switching yeah. opposite. So it could be compensated. I don't know why. Well, we're going from around seven. Well, there you go. Here's your min five nine to nineteen. We're we got a pretty big swing going on 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 the working side. And would that swing because of the other side? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if, if it's in the process of checking the reaction of the O2s. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like if you look at this, let's zoom in a little bit. What do we see? I don't remember what it was before. You know what I mean? Because it looks like that's dropping and then that's Well, let's look at this. Like we're still going rich lean, rich lean, but it's adding fuel in increments. Yeah. And then we get up to here and, and we see the reaction of the O2. The O2 goes rich and then it takes the fuel away and you see how the O2 drops lean right there? So after this point, remember it's delayed. This is the command and this is the response. It's almost like the computer right now is making a determination on sensor or function and, and that's what it's doing. I think that's what all this is all about too. And it's doing it on both banks. And I'm not 100% sure about that, but that's what it looks like to me. That what we're, what we're looking at would be the computer knowing there's an issue with this O2 and it's taking fuel away, reacting to it only so far, letting it go, and then doing it again over and over, really trying to bring this sensor in, into balance. And I, it really looks like it's at the same time doing it on the other side. I don't know why they would do that, but that's what it looks like to me. As soon as this stops doing this, I'll show you the, the scan data. I don't know how long it's going to sit here and idle. Maybe I need to rev it a few times before it decides that, hey, it's going to stop doing that. I mean, we didn't have to before. It just stopped on its own. So I'm going to try to let it run without revving it here a couple more minutes, and then we'll see if we can force this condition where you'll end up seeing both fuel trims be balanced and both fuel trims will be based off of this sensor once it sets that fall. Maybe the difference here now and why we can't get this to react is we cleared our fuel trim data. We cleared our memory of fuel trim and now it's got to go through all this again where before it 
we still have that memory in there. So that might be the long term gone now. So now it's going off the Yeah. It's fighting. And it's missing hard. The sensor's oh, yeah, it's, it's trying to get it, you know, it's yeah. trying to get it in that sweet little mix of range, but can't do it. Alright, I'm going to rev it. See if I can make this thing stop using this sensor. Let's go a little bit higher RPM. finally on that sensor, huh? Still not the same range. Our minimum is 3, 2.9. Look at that. It's almost like it's it's almost reacting now like it should be. So is it a temperature thing? Is it not getting hot enough? Remember the heater circuit did show us a, an issue. That is almost a functional sensor. And our roughness is gone right now. As you guys are watching this, there's still no debate that this is a, this is a, incorrect O2 that's in this car. You saw it move, we switched sides. It moved from the driver side to the passenger side when we started this and then it moved back. Sure does seem to be temperature related, but it gets better. It's a more zoomed in view though. Work. Fuel trims look pretty decent now. Well, one of the things we're looking at here is frequency differences between the two. You know, you have to let your, your eyes, you've got to adjust to these min-max scales here. There's your zero line. Here's your zero line here. Can I reset that? That's just a buffer. I don't think that resets my min-max. No, it did. Perfect. So give you a little bit better idea of what the fuel trim's doing what the sensors are doing on both sides. That minimum of zero is actually wrong. Let's reset that one more time. There we go, that'll give us a little bit better perspective on both sides. We definitely see an amplitude issue. We definitely see a frequency issue. It's interesting that when I raised the RPM and heated it up a little bit, it seemed to start working a little bit better, but still not right. And this is the intermittent nature you'll get with these. Sometimes it runs good, sometimes it doesn't. And one of the main reasons it'll run good is when the computer stops using that sensor and bases its fuel control off of the, off of the other bank, which it has not done yet. Again, I cleared the memory, so I missed that window. I'm gonna hold the RPM up one more time. this RPM as far as the switch rate of it. So again, our, our min-max voltages are not the same. You can see the 
amplitudes different from the factory sensor to the left to this replacement to the right. This is actually the best we've seen it functioning. And that explains the intermittent complaint that I've, I've seen with these in the past. I think what we showed with the sensor warming up and the difference in how fast the factory one reacts to this one. We've also seen some differences in the heater circuit as far as some dropouts that we weren't seeing. Uh, it does seem to be temperature affected. I raise the RPM, it gets real hot and the sensor starts to function. Something internal to this sensor, whatever it may be, again, last statement, I do not know. But these ones that run this two and a half volt bias on the sensor grounds, guys, you have to use a factory O2. Hopefully this video showed that.